Greetings to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's such a blessing coming your way once again with God's word. And I believe that you'll be richly blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, I'd like to read to you something from the word of God, which I believe would greatly bless you. It's found in the book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. These are the words of the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit. And I want you to listen carefully. It says, Not that I have already attained, or am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Glory to God. Now, this is really amazing. You know, the Apostle Paul, uh, being one who is already born again, he's already saved. You, you remember his old life, he was persecuting believers and doing all, all manner of assaults against God's people. And here, Paul gets this revelation after being saved, after being born again, that there's something more to this than just being born again and occupying the earth. You know, the very fact that God left you on earth, if you're born again, the very fact that God left you on earth, just not yet in heaven, should tell you that there's a higher purpose. There's actually something that he has left you on earth here to do. Now, there's something Paul said that I really want you to pay attention to. He said, I want to lay hold of that for which Christ also laid hold of me. Glory to God. Now, think about this for a moment. It's like Paul just, uh, after being saved, after a while, going through the motions of Christianity, you know, people say, I'm a believer, I'm born again, and that's just about that. But Paul felt, no, there's something more to this, you know. At least I should be in heaven. That's the best thing God could do for me right now. At least just take me to heaven. At least I won't have trouble with uh, maybe probably missing heaven someday. But Paul thought to, to, I mean, thought to himself, and he just had this, uh, uh, this thing in his heart that steered him up to believe that, hey, there must be a reason there must be a purpose. That's why I really love uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. The word of God tells us that we are God's own workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God pre-planned ahead of time for us. He, has, he actually predestined for us to do them. I, I like the way the Amplified puts it. It says that there, there is a good word, I mean a good work that God has prepared for us ahead of time and also a good path, a path which he had prepared. In other words, God has not only destined us for something, he has also destined us for a particular path. I believe that's what Paul was actually referring to here he said my desire right now having been born again having received the most important miracle on earth from the lord jesus christ now i want to lay hold he said i press on i press on you know the, the, the word press on it's actually it actually has an attitude of one who is actually pushing forward it's not something passive he's actually pressing into something Oh, I love this. He's saying, I believe he's saying that the Spirit of God is saying that to you and to me today. God actually wanted us to see this someday, that we ought to press into something. That I'm not going to be satisfied with just, oh, I'm born again. Now that's powerful. That's where it all begins. That's the ultimate. But then, having been born again, I've been left on earth to live for Jesus. I've been left on earth to do something. There's a good work that I've been predestined. Now, the amazing thing about this is not just any good work. There's a specific assignment, there's a specific mandate on your life of which you're going to stand one day before the Lord Jesus Christ to give account of. That's why the Bible said that for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And here Paul is saying, hey, I've discovered that there is more to this thing than what I've, I've always lived for. Now he started, uh, uh, he had this desire which he said, I want to press into it. I want to lay hold of that for which Christ has also laid hold of, of me. You know, for, for some, some days ago, I, 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 probably for some week right now, I, I, the Lord has really uh, held my heart to, uh, on the scripture. I kind of just find myself like thinking on this thing again and again. That have I actually laid hold of that? Not just anything. You see, there are several good works you can do that will be a blessing to God's people that, that the Father will be pleased with. But there is something he's going to ask you about when you stand before him on that day. And that's what Paul is saying here. I want to lay hold of that. And you see, laying hold all begins with discovery. What is it? Not just, let's start working, let's start doing, you know. What is it? That's where it all begins with. The discovery of that purpose, that assignment, that mandate from heaven is where it all begins. And then after discovering it, the next thing is to pursue. So after discovery, the next thing is pursuit. So I want to encourage you today. I don't know where you are in your work with the Lord. Probably you've been saved for a long time. And you've never really... Uh, discovered God's purpose for your life. Probably you've been hearing uh, God has a plan for your life, God has a purpose for your life, but you've never come to a point where you say, hey, Lord, what is it? And by the way, you're not going to discover it from somebody, a preacher, a pastor, a friend, a colleague. Or no, there's something that comes to you personally from the Holy Spirit. Mom, that, that's very big. Because you see that when you understand that this comes by the Spirit, you're going to listen to Him. You're going to say, Holy Spirit, tell me, show me. 
And sometimes people say, how is he going to tell me that? That's, that's not your business. One thing I've known in, in my work with the Lord so far, one of the things I've learned is that when God wants to speak to you, he knows how to get your attention. He doesn't have to speak to you the way he speaks to me. He doesn't have to speak to me the way he speaks to you. But one thing is very, uh, very sure about that you seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. And so you go before the Lord and say, Lord, what is it? What is it? There's so much passion in this thing. I want to find out what is that thing for which Christ has actually laid hold of me. Why did he leave me on earth here? I, I couldn't have just been left here on earth to just mind my own business or to try to pursue or, or just uh, pursue the, 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 the mundane things of this life. There is a higher purpose. And so you say, Holy Spirit, please open my eyes to it. Whatever you want, how, how, whichever way you want to show that to me, I'm available to you. I want to discover that thing for which Christ has laid hold of me. And I want to pursue it to the very end. And I can guarantee you one thing. The moment you find that out by the Spirit, the next thing that comes to your heart is pursuing it. You, you really, he also gives you the, the passion to really press into it. And so that you live every day so happy. You know, one of the things that people don't understand, what makes people happy every day is not what they have or what they think they've achieved. But the very thought of the fact that they are living in the center of God's will. They are living out God's purposes for their life. That's really the secret of fulfillment. When you go, go to bed at night before you close your eyes, what, what gives you fulfillment is that thing, that thing. I believe that's what Jesus was so happy about while he was on earth. That he was always doing what the Father wanted him to be. He was always at the center of God's will. And that's what it is all about. Like the Apostle Paul, I want to encourage you. Press into this thing. Pray about it. Show so much desire. Tell the Lord, Lord, I want to do your will. My life is for your glory. I don't want to do my own will. I want when I stand before you on that day, you can look at me and say, well done, good and faithful servant, for you have done what I called you to do. And boy, I tell you, that will be worth everything. That will be worth the whole pain and the whole challenges you went through life. So let's do it for the Lord today. Just like Paul, press into it. Forget those things that are behind. Forget the past sins laid on Jesus Christ. Forget the past fault, the things that haven't worked, the mistakes and all of that. And then press into this thing that you may lay hold of that for which Christ himself also laid hold on you. And your life will never remain the same. Thank you, Father, for this moment. Lord, we give you praise because everyone who has worked today, you've challenged them and you're going to cause them to respond rightly and it will be all for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you and thanks for watching.